life. Today, uh, we're venturing out, way out, to the edge of everything, really. We're talking about NASA's Voyager 1. That's right. Launched back in 1977, if you can believe it. 77. And now it's, what, 15 billion miles away? Just staggering. Absolutely staggering. And the big news is this remarkable feat reviving its primary roll thrusters. Which have been silent since 2004, right? Two decades. Exactly. Silent for 20 years. And now, somehow, they're back online. It really tells you something about, well, the ingenuity needed for these missions, doesn't it? Keeping things running over that kind of distance in time. It's mind-boggling. We're talking about coaxing 1970s technology back to life from, you know, interstellar space. And Voyager's legacy is already huge. Those Jupiter and Saturn flybys, iconic images. Absolutely foundational. And now it's our only probe, actually, in interstellar space. The uh, only direct messenger we have out there. So it's sending back unique data, but uh, communicating with something nearly 50 years old, 15 billion miles out, that must be incredibly difficult. Oh, the challenges are immense. When those primary thrusters went quiet, the ones it uses to precisely point its antenna back home. Yeah. Well, that was a problem. Because the backups weren't as good. Not quite as accurate, no. So keeping that communication link solid, that vital link, it became a real tightrope walk. But the NASA team, they didn't just write it off as broken hardware. No, they didn't. The mission manager, Kareem Badarudin, and his team, they took a different approach. They started digging into the commands themselves. Which must be complex, given the signal delay. How long is it now? About 22 hours for a round trip. Send a command, wait almost a full day for confirmation. Wow, so you can't just troubleshoot in real time. Not at all. Every interaction is planned meticulously. And they suspected, you know, maybe it wasn't the thruster hardware itself that failed. Maybe something in the instructions being sent. Precisely. A subtle glitch in the command sequence, perhaps? Imagine trying to diagnose that from billions of miles away, based on faint signals. It speaks volumes about their persistence. So they work at a new plan, new commands. They did. They crafted this new sequence, sent it off into the void. And then they had to wait that whole day again. The anticipation must have been incredible. You send the command, and then you wait and hope. What happened? Did they just get a clear signal saying thruster's okay? Not quite so dramatic initially. First, they saw this tiny, tiny flicker in the telemetry, a slight temperature increase near the thrusters. Okay. A sign of life. Exactly. A potential sign. And then confirmation. After 20 years, the thrusters fired successfully. Amazing. Just amazing. We heard from Todd Barber on the team, too. Yeah, his quote really captured it. It was such a glorious moment. Team morale was very high that day. Another miracle save. You can just feel the relief and excitement there, fi fixing 70s hardware in deep space. Using modern analysis techniques, but interacting with fundamentally old tech. And think about this. Voyager's main computer, mm. it has less processing power than like an old pocket calculator. Seriously, that's incredible. It really is. Testament to brilliant, efficient engineering back then, designed to last. And keeping it going now, it's more than just nostalgia, isn't it? Why is it still so important? Oh, absolutely vital. Voyager 1 is our only instrument directly sampling the interstellar medium, the space between stars. So the data it sends back is completely unique. Completely. It's teaching us about the environment outside our solar system's protective bubble, the heliosphere, and those lessons are crucial for planning future missions that might go even farther. So reviving these thrusters isn't just a quick fix. It could extend the mission. Potentially, yes. It could mean Voyager keeps sending back this invaluable data well into the 2030s, more years exploring the unknown. It's just a fantastic story, really. Perseverance, clever thinking against incredible odds. It really is. Human ingenuity overcoming vast distances and the relentless passage of time. Okay, so wrapping this up, what strikes me most is this blend of uh, sheer persistence and really creative problem solving. Looking at old tech, old problems with fresh eyes. Right. Not just giving up when something seems great and beyond repair. Yeah. And it makes you think, doesn't it? If we can solve that kind of problem across billions of miles with decades old gear, what other challenges that seem completely impossible right now, maybe in medicine or energy or anywhere? What could we tackle if we brought that same focused, relentless, inventive spirit to bear? Exactly. Something definitely worth pondering.